I don't know, man. I don't know. I- I'm tired. I'm tired of making sense of this show. I- I'm tired of watching wrestling on Tuesday nights, period. I really am. I am just tired. I am just tired. Now, I'm no uh, wrestling analyst. I'm no uh, wrestling personality. I- I- I'm not a fucking creative writer. I don't own a promotion. What the fuck do I know? I'm the smart mark on the internet who doesn't know shit, yet I make all the Roman Reigns fans cry because I speak the truth. Let me get this straight. John Cena, John Cena is lobbying for a WrestleMania match. His road to WrestleMania. He wants a WrestleMania moment. He wants a WrestleMania moment. I I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. WWE's lack of care for championships in this company. I don't. Especially the especially the major titles in this company. Does anybody care? Or are they really just props? It's like anybody could go on WWEshop.com and become a WWE champion by buying a replica belt. The WWE championship that AJ Styles wears around his waist has just as much value as one of those fucking replica belts that some 400-pound slob living in fucking Des Moines, Iowa can purchase by himself and wear around the house. Look, <laughs> look at me, I'm the, the, the WWE champion. <laughs> Look at me, Grandma! I'm the WWE champion! Look at me, Dad! There's no difference! <laughs> There's no difference! You may be laughing, but I'm, I swear to God, there's no difference between the two titles. There's none. And the reason why I say that is because there's six weeks to go before WrestleMania. Six weeks. Isn't AJ Styles the biggest name on your brand? Why is this man, as the WWE Champion, losing anything on the road to WrestleMania? Shouldn't your priority be Let's make the Nakamura AJ Styles match as valuable as we can make it. Let's make the WWE Championship as valuable as we can make it. AJ should be looking like fucking Roman Reigns going into WrestleMania. He is holding the biggest prize in the industry, mind you. Mr. Dog. Or is the belt made of styrofoam? Because I can't fucking tell. AJ Styles lost clean... To John Cena tonight on SmackDown Live. For what? For what? I thought John Cena's road to WrestleMania was for him getting a match at WrestleMania. There's no reason for him to be put in the WWE Championship match at Fastlane, an already crowded main event, mind you. Was John Cena's road to WrestleMania worth compromising a loss of momentum on AJ Styles' behalf? I don't get it. Nakamura or Styles should not be losing on the road to WrestleMania. I don't understand it. John Cena loses the Elimination Chamber. Fine. Comes out on Monday Night Raw, calls himself a failure. Fine. Can't be more than a failure. Can't be more of a failure than SmackDown Live. Everything this show does revolves around the word failure. You look a failure in the dictionary. Road Dogg's face is going to be plastered right there. And then an asterisk, you're going to see Vince, Kevin Dunn, and then the SmackDown Live logo. Might as well put the women's division there as well. Calls himself a failure. Challenges John Cena. John Cena challenges The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Says the match won't happen. Management won't won't make it. He doesn't make the matches. So he says his road to WrestleMania is going to run through SmackDown Live. Was John Cena's road to WrestleMania worth giving a loss to AJ Styles? 
This is where WWE shows no care for their championships. Just like on Monday Night Raw, they had The Miz lose twice in one night. How is that doing anything to the Intercontinental Championship? Yet, 15 minutes before that match took place, or both of those matches took place, The Miz is talking about how much prestige he brought to the Intercontinental Championship. How much prestige does the belt have if you're losing to two guys in the same night? Yet I'm the smart mark. Damn right I'm fucking smart, motherfucker. Smarter than you. Or all the goons who want to fucking tag me on Twitter without adding me. I see you. JD from NY's a cancer. At me, motherfucker. Say it to me. I know you don't want to get a benching, but I don't blame you. It's like this company works ass backwards. Nobody can honestly sit there watching me tonight and tell me, oh, WWE storyline tonight was, a mu was much better than the idea you proposed on Monday Night Raw. I, I thought wholeheartedly that WWE was going to have John Cena show up on, on SmackDown Live. Shinsuke Nakamura was going to have a match with John Cena at Fastlane. So, uh, John Cena was going to lose to Shinsuke, right? Because it, all, it, it makes sense. I mean, for fuck's sakes, it makes sense. You don't give AJ Styles a loss. You keep him nice and clean going into Fastlane. He overcomes the odds at Fastlane. Shinsuke Nakamura beats a big name like John Cena on the road to WrestleMania. There we go. We're off to the races for AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. John Cena's a failure again at getting to WrestleMania. As of right now, he's got no WrestleMania match after losing to Nakamura. Maybe I'm just fucking talking out of my ass. Maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. Shinsuke challenging, or John Cena rather challenging Shinsuke. Shinsuke being a man, putting his Royal Rumble opportunity on the line to go to WrestleMania. Boom, boom, boom. Shinsuke looks like a fucking megastar in the end. He beats John Cena clean with a Kinshasa. John Cena's broken hearted. He's not going to WrestleMania. We're all winners here. We're all winners. No, but WWE wants to beat the WWE champion on SmackDown Live clean. Clean. Oh, well, what difference does it make, JD? He's going to win the six-pack challenge. How the fuck do you know? Do you know who you're dealing with here? Do you know who you're dealing with here? D-O-double-G, Road Dog, Road Dog. Oh, you didn't know? Yeah, your ass better fucking get fired if this show has any fucking chance of survival on Tuesday nights. Knowing me, I may end up picking Dolph Ziggler to win the fucking match on, on Fastlane Sunday. That's how fucking stupid WWE is. That way John Cena doesn't get his opportunity at WrestleMania and then we don't get our fucking match because everybody wants it. And WWE were like, ah, the fans want it? Fuck them. Fuck them. But do you see where I'm going with this? John Cena's road to WrestleMania should have been that to get to WrestleMania. Not get a WWE Championship opportunity at Fastlane. It kind of defeats the fucking purpose. Kind of defeats the fucking purpose here. The reason why he was in the Elimination Chamber was to go to WrestleMania to fight for the title. Now all of a sudden, WWE switching it up just 24 hours later. John Cena now wants to walk into WrestleMania as the WWE Champion? Was that his goal all along, to be the champion? No, it should have been John Cena trying to get to WrestleMania to fight for the title. Not walk into WrestleMania as the, as the champion. Two completely different things here. Now, but WWE thinks that they're doing the right thing. Their WWE champion loses clean on national television six weeks before WrestleMania. You, you, guys, you guys got the right idea. Continue to do your job. Continue to do your job. I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. It was fucking garbage. The match was great. The match was fantastic. But the execution and the storyline, come on, man. You got to do better than that. You got to treat your championships with fucking care. Give me a break here. No champion before WrestleMania should be losing six weeks before the show. What is with SmackDown Live copying Monday Night Raw? This, this fast lane main event has undergone more changes than fucking, I, I don't know. It, it, what's going on here? What's going on here? SmackDown seemingly is just copying everything Monday Night Raw is doing. You got this match, which started out as a triple threat match, turned into a fatal four-way, then it turned into a fatal five-way. Now we're in a six-pack challenge. I mean, 
Do they book these shows and do they creatively write for these shows in bulk? Are they the same fucking show? Just on separate nights? Or are they two separate entities? The only thing that stands out between the two shows are the fucking graphics. And the little silly fucking Windows Media Player bullshit that they're doing. Other than that, you can't even tell these shows apart. It's like they got the same fucking brain. SmackDown needs some fucking identity. SmackDown Live, need, Smackdown Live needs a draft. Badly. This entire roster needs a shakeup. But I mean, lay off the copying of what we're seeing on Monday nights. Unless they're just waiting till after WrestleMania and a reset button. New Day. New Day may be the worst thing on SmackDown Live, and that pains me to say because just back in October, they were concluding what was probably the best thing on SmackDown Live. How do you go from that to carrying around milky, buttery, fluffy pancakes from Titus Catering? I don't understand this fucking shit. Their entire character is now built on carrying fucking pancakes around. Dry pancakes at that. They don't even look appetizing. They're not covered in luscious butter, topped with Mrs. Butterworth fucking maple syrup. They got nothing going on there. If you're presenting me with fucking eye-opening, just yummy, delicious pancakes, then it's a different story, but those pancakes are as dry as the creative writing on this show. It, it's, it's, a, it's as dry as their fucking character. All three of them. All three of them. They are literally the worst thing on SmackDown Live. Now, now, they kind of made me take just a couple steps back on that. Well, Big E anyway. The other two, they didn't, I don't give a fuck about them. Uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. I, I mean, it, it's a joke. It's like a circus. All of a sudden, Big E takes the microphone and, and just, just starts spitting truth bombs. I'm like, what the fuck? Where, where, where'd this Big E come from? Why, why, haven't we, why haven't we been seeing this Big E all this time? Can we let him do some more talking instead of fucking gyrating and, and, and stuffing 14 fucking pancakes in his mouth? Great shit by Big E tonight, man. And, and wow. Wow. Just a couple of weeks ago, WWE and SmackDown Live, Mr. Dog was building a tag team match built on the premise of fucking pancakes. Look at that. Wow. When a segment is serious, it's actually good television. You put the New Day, who was all of a sudden serious. You got the Usos, who have been the best thing on SmackDown Live. And then you got the Bludgeon Brothers, who are serious in themselves. When you got three serious personalities going on, on there between three teams, makes for decent television. Who would have thought? Can we get more of that, please? Usos cut a great fucking promo about them not being at WrestleMania. Them not being at WrestleMania. Ever since the Usos were on this big run, right? I don't know when they dated it back to, but it may have been, it may have been 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, right? The last six years, the last six or seven years, the Usos have been on the pre-show at WrestleMania. Not this year. WWE would not dare to put them on the pre-show this year. But according to Road Dog, being on the pre-show is the same thing as being on the pay-per-view. That's how stupid this guy is. That's how stupid this guy is. He publicly says this via a social media platform on Twitter. What difference does it make? The pre-show is just is basically the pay-per-view. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Not when the users are coming out on SmackDown Live complaining that they're not on the main show. Not when these guys don't make the DVD cover or the DVD release, when it's released to Kmart and Walmart and all these other fucking places, was Neville and Austin Aries on the WrestleMania 33 DVD when it came out? No, of course not. When you look at the fucking packaging, nowhere on the back of the box do you see WWE Cruiserweight Championship, Neville versus Austin Aries. Well, where can I find that match? You can't, because it's not on the show. But Road Dogg says the pre-show is just it's just as important as the, as the pay-per-view. The pre-show is the pay-per-view. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. When people intentionally don't give a fuck about missing the pre-show, it ain't part of the pay-per-view. Fucking idiot. This, this is the guy we got running SmackDown Live. This is the guy we got running SmackDown Live instead of creative. 
Jesus Christ. I could put this fucking stuffed animal plush of a beaver looking at me in creative and we'd have a better job. And he'd do a better job at SmackDown Live Creative. Jesus Christ, man. Those were the big things that happened on SmackDown Live tonight, man. Outside of that, listen, it was better than last week because we got AJ Styles versus John Cena. And when you put those two guys in the main event and you give them 30 minutes, there's no fucking way that it can't be better than last week. But still, the show makes no sense. They give you a great match and then everything underneath it doesn't make sense. Cena starts the show off. John Cena asks Shane McMahon to be added to the WWE title match at Fastlane. So then Daniel Bryan comes out and interjects what he wants to do for John Cena for him to get into the main event of Fastlane. Allow me to tell you why I am here. I am here for the same reason that 99.9% of the SmackDown superstars are here. The only one superstar with a guaranteed match at WrestleMania is... Shinsuke Nakamura. So I, like almost everyone else, are trying to find our road to WrestleMania. In less than two weeks at Fastlane, there is a fatal five-way championship match. I want in. I am not here for a handout. I am here tonight to do whatever it takes to earn a spot in that match. So let's cut right down to the chase and get it started and find out what I have to do to make it to WrestleMania. Now, John, we've all heard exactly what was on your mind and what you said. And a superstar of your magnitude, everybody is looking for their role on the grandest stage of them all. But the pathway that you propose puts you smack dab in the middle of the WWE Championship match at Fastlane in two weeks' time. And I don't understand why. Where if you won, there's already not enough only bodies in that match. What the fuck we need another one for? To main event WrestleMania, history would be made because you would be walking into WrestleMania the 17-time world champion. And wouldn't it be better if John Cena potentially won the 17th at WrestleMania? Again, it doesn't make any sense. For their it's like as bad. If you won in that match, we're going to give you something that we give to everybody else an opportunity. In tonight's main event, where if you win that match, we will put you in the WWE title match at Fastlane. Main event of SmackDown Live tonight. If I win, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Fine, who's my opponent? It's somebody you're very familiar with. Tonight, you will go one-on-one -on -one with none other than the WWE Champion, AJ Styles! Wow, that is huge! Listen, it was a great match. Everybody got excited. I know why they did it. Cena was on SmackDown. Put him in the main event against the biggest name on the brand. Maintain the viewership. Cena's going to bring in viewers anyway. Coming over from Raw. Like I said, maintain those viewers for the end of the show. I know why they did it. Logically, to me, it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Not what I would have done. If John Cena really wanted to get to WrestleMania, the WWE Championship should not have been on his mind. I would have had him come out and say, listen, you know, Shinsuke Nakamura is the only one guaranteed to go to WrestleMania right now. I'm throwing down a challenge to Shinsuke Nakamura. He beat me once before. Now I want the rematch. I want a rematch at Fastlane. And you know what? Let's make it interesting. Put your number one contendership 
to AJ Styles on the line at Fastlane and let's do it on pay-per-view. That would have been so much more entertaining. That would have been so much more intriguing, yet we kind of know what the outcome's going to be. But not only would it have given John Cena a a big match against Shinsuke on pay-per-view, it would have given Fastlane another marquee match in which it doesn't have right now. There's no selling point on Fastlane outside of this big WWE Championship match. I don't give a fuck about the Usos in the New Day. I don't give a shit about the United States Championship. I don't give a shit about the Women's Championship. I don't. I don't. Nakamura and John Cena would have been perfect for Shinsuke Nakamura on the road to WrestleMania. It would have it, it would have given AJ, you know, some momentum going into WrestleMania. He wouldn't have lost this meaningless match on SmackDown Live to John Cena, right? Kind of, It kind of kills his momentum a little bit on the road to WrestleMania. That's just my opinion. And Shinsuke would have beaten John Cena. We would have had a, a clash of the titans. They both would have been going into Mania and their match looking strong. Now, you look at the card. Cena's added to the match now because he beat AJ Styles tonight. Cena's added to the card. It's a six-pack challenge. What is Shinsuke Nakamura going to do at Fastlane? He beat Aiden English tonight in a throwaway match. Is WWE's grand plan for Shinsuke Nakamura on the road to WrestleMania to put him in a match with Rusev at Fastlane? Not really what I want out of Rusev Day going into WrestleMania. It just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't look imp- uh, appealing to me. It, it doesn't. WWE could have done so much better with this. And again, they dropped the ball. They dropped the ball on something that could have been very, very good. And they just didn't care. They just didn't care whatsoever about uh, fast lane or getting to WrestleMania. Now, we have, if my computer fucking works here, Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. Um, This one was a take on what happened last week. Baron Corbin beat uh, Kevin Owens. So this week, of course, WWE in an unpredictable fashion has to book Baron Corbin against the other half of KO, Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn hits a big DDT out of the corner for another uh, for a two count. Dolph Ziggler comes out of nowhere and super kicks Owens, who is sitting at commentary. Ziggler comes in street clothes, super kicks the fuck out of Owens, knocking him out of the chair at the announce table. Ziggler ducks and hides underneath the ring. Corbin hits end of days on Sami Zayn for the pin. After the match, Corbin stands up, his music goes off, Ziggler enters the ring and drops him with a zigzag out of nowhere. So we got Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens both losing to Baron Corbin. And Dolph Ziggler hits the zigzag on Baron Corbin at the end of his match. So it's WWE pretty much giving uh, a little piece of the plate to everybody in this fatal or or six-pack challenge, rather, at Fastlane. After the match, Shane McMahon is eating a box of popcorn, just relishing in the fact that both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are frustrated. And Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are pissed at Shane McMahon following this match with Baron Corbin. What was that? What was that? How did he, where did he come from? How did he get you like that? One second, I'm about to take out Baron Corbin, and then what a surprise. How's it going, guys? Okay, are you kidding me? Did you Shane see McMahon what happened the out there? Did you see what just popcorn. happened? Yep. <laughs> oh. oh, I see how it is. Listen, I see how it is. Listen, before, before you guys start going off on another conspiracy thingy, excuse me, listen up. Daniel Bryan just left, okay? And I suggest you guys go after him and catch up with him because, you know, Bree doesn't like when you guys are all late for dinner. Have a good night. Pre doesn't like when you guys ends. are all late for dinner. It never ends with this guy! <laughs> Sami Zayn's doing uh, doing very good on SmackDown Live, man. But again, I don't I don't really know where it's going. It's looked like it's like they took a, a little hiatus from the whole Daniel Bryan Shane McMahon storyline right now to focus on this six pack challenge. Ruby Riot versus Naomi. Um, you want some positivity from me as far as the women's division goes? I'm glad it wasn't a fucking six woman tag. Ruby Riot's probably my, and this is, uh, this is really reaching, because I hate everybody in the women's division. Ruby Riot, I enjoy her act. I, I think she carries herself very well. I think she's a decent promo. She's got a great look. She's not bad in the ring. 
I think Ruby Riot right now, just being, you know, that the women right now on SmackDown Live haven't been portrayed as, as well as they should. I think Ruby Riot right now is the one and only bright spot in the women's division on SmackDown Live. She went one on one with Naomi. Naomi hits a big Insiguri off the middle rope. Uh, Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan try to pull Ruby to safety, but Naomi pulls her back. Ruby turns it around. Naomi decks Ruby from the apron, goes up top, misses a big move on the way down. Naomi recovers, gets sent face first into the top turnbuckle. Ruby Riot then hits the Riot kick for the win. As she looks strong going into fast lane with a pin over Naomi, a win over Naomi, and she will be getting the women's championship match at fast lane against Charlotte. We discussed on Monday Night Raw the reason why WWE hasn't really thrown any hints as to uh, Charlotte and Asuka, which is the match that we all want for WrestleMania, is because if Asuka comes out and challenges Charlotte right now for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship, it would kind of take away from the match with Ruby Riot, and it would kind of make it predictable. We talked about that on Monday Night Raw Review last night, or this afternoon, rather. Um, so they're probably saving that, hopefully, fingers crossed, for after Fastlane, Ruby Riot versus Charlotte Fastlane for the Women's Championship. Ruby Riot gets a win over Naomi. Backstage, Tyler Breeze and Fandango. This is really, I don't know what WWE was doing here. I, I kind of, I, I want to say that this was a troll job by WWE. Tyler Breeze and Fandango are going over solved cases on their bulletin board in the office. Josh Dumel walks in, and he plugs his new show, Unsolved. They got this new show on the USA Network with the murders, or him documenting the murders of Tupac and Biggie. That premieres on the USA Network tonight. Josh Dumel who is the other celebrity named in this Richard Rodriguez case, along with Roman Reigns, just miraculously shows up on SmackDown Live. Uh, did he get sent there by Richard Rodriguez? Or did WWE fly this guy in to be a part of this skit on SmackDown Live as kind of a, a troll job to Richard Rodriguez? Kind of saying, yeah, we, we, we don't worry. we're not worrying about your shit. We're not worrying about your leaked evidence or your laptop or your text messages or your emails. Just kind of find it odd. That Josh Dumel is on SmackDown Live. So, uh, you know, knowing WWE, this was probably a troll job by them to get him on SmackDown Live tonight. But either way you look at it, I don't give a fuck about Tupac or Big E or the Unsolved Mysteries or the team of Brizongo, as a matter of fact. I just don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Uh, the New Day interrupted this. Brizongo can't believe that Dumel isn't a real detective. He just plays one on TV. Dumel says goodbye to the New Day and leaves. They walked in eating fucking pancakes, as usual. Speaking of the New Day, I, I do have the promo here from the New Day. Um, we're going to go over this in a second. The New Day on SmackDown Live have been absolutely cringe. Their characters have been awful. The Usos, on the other hand, the complete opposite. Probably the best thing on SmackDown Live. And again, again, they show you exactly why they are the best team on SmackDown Live. With Listen to this. WrestleMania season in full swing, your boys, the New, New Day, are looking to secure our position on the grandest stage of them all. Yes, and all three of them point to the sign because one is not enough. But first, Fast Lane where we take on our greatest rivals. I'm talking about two guys who push us to the limit. From money in the bank all the way to hell in a cell, I think you know who I'm talking about. Who, 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 who? I'm talking about Jay and Jim, the Usos. And oh boy, that rivalry is hotter than my inner thighs in the summer. And in less than two weeks, we're gonna do it again. Because last week we defeated Benjamin and Gable in order to become first in line at an opportunity at the W, W. Undeservedly e so. I mean, they've seen their moment in the sun. I mean, this is ridiculous. Championship. Just SmackDown Live rehashing what worked in October. 
and last nah, summer nah, nah. and trying to do it knows. again we right before them. WrestleMania. We respect them, no doubt. But this isn't about respect. This is about winning. And at Fastlane, when we win, we're going to make our way down to the Big Easy New Orleans. We're going to party on Bourbon Street, get to Millie rocking and a twerking and swiveling our hips with the entire WWE universe. And do you know why? Because! <laughs> You talk about the power of positivity? Well, here's a dose of the reality. For the past nine years, me and News been right here. Been right here grinding. For the past nine years, a whole bunch of blood, sweat, and tears been poured right in the middle of this ring, Oos. For the past nine years, we try to prove to everybody, everybody that the Usos belong on WrestleMania. You're fucking right they do. That's just it. WrestleMania. Year after year, we begin passed over. New Day versus the Usos, and we about to run right through you like we always do. Oh, yeah, this year, we the MVP. This year, we the first round draft pick. This year, we the all-star team. This year, we the starters. You on the sideline. Yes, sir. That's the difference between you and us. We know how to adapt. We evolve, we move with the game. While y'all sitting there stuck in the past five years, the future is standing right in front of you, boy. Fast lane at WrestleMania. Welcome! Five years? Five years in the past? Have the two of you lost your mind? We've been at the top where we belong. We've been kicking down doors. We've been breaking bears. We've been setting records. We hosted WrestleMania when the two of you were in the back eating catering. Titus and don't like that. Lane, we take what is currently yours and become not the one time, not the two time, not three or four, but five time WWE World Tag Team Champions. And Big E going in, man. And there's not a damn thing either of you can do about it. See, this is what we need to see. This is what we need to see. And then the Bludgeon Brothers, I'm going to cut it right here. And the Bludgeon Brothers come out and they grab their mallets and they don't really chase off the New Day and the Usos, but they kind of just back away. You know, intimidation. But I, I like this segment because it, it was serious. It goes from the cheesy pancake-eating clowns to Big E taking a microphone and be like, whoa, wh wh where the fuck is this Big E at? Where was this Big E at hiding? This is what I want to see. Seriousness. And the Usos are fantastic. The Usos are just great at literally everything right now. And they deserve a major, major match. That could potentially steal the show at WrestleMania 34. Can't wait to see what they do. So we got that, which is probably the best segment on the show. We got Renee Young backstage with Bobby Roode. She asks Bobby Roode about Fastlane in the match with Randy Orton. There was no Jinder Mahal this week. Roode talks about the top 10 list and respecting Orton. And Orton, Orton walks up, says that it's not about the top 10 list. It's about the United States Championship because in 16 years, it's the only title that he has not had. One says Roode just happens to be the guy that he has to run through to get the United States Championship. I am assuming that Jinder will be added to this to make it a triple threat. Because why the fuck not? You're going to leave him off the fucking card? Come on. It's going to be Jinder, Rude, and Orton at Fastlane for the United States Championship. Aiden English for Shinsuke Nakamura. Very, uh, very self-explanatory here. Nakamura with good vibrations. That leads to the big knees in the corner. That leads to the Kinshasa for the pin. Aiden English goes down to Shinsuke. Rusev Day is fucking over. Uh, both as far as fan reaction and it, it just looks like a dead gimmick. No, but they're not doing anything with it. They're not doing anything with it. It's a waste. It's an absolute waste. How WWE is not utilizing these two guys when everybody clearly wants to see them, when clearly they are the most over team and the most over characters on this brand. WWE will not feature them prominently. It's amazing how they... Just have these guys go out there and get over on something so simple 
And WWE will not push it because it's not in their agenda. It's pathetic. It's absolutely fucking pathetic. After the match, Rusev looks disappointed. Uh, John Cena's music hits. He comes down the aisle. He and Shinsuke have a nice little face-to-face, and they both, both point at the WrestleMania sign. Same old shit. Same old shit. John Cena versus AJ Styles, you guys know, was the main event. This one was back and forth. They traded a lot of big moves here. It was a typical John Cena, AJ Styles match. Very, very good TV match. Probably going to be uh, ending up being the best TV match of the week when all is said and done for the main roster. Um, I have yet to watch 205 Live yet. I know Roddy is fade, uh, going one-on-one with Kalisto, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, this was a big back-and-forth match, man. AJ goes to the apron, springboards in for a 450. He gets the knees up to Cena. Cena scoops AJ, hits the AA in the middle of the ring. Cena rolls through. With another AA, AJ makes it to the apron. He runs to the outside for a breather, creates some separation between he and Cena. Cena runs to the outside, runs around the ring post, runs right into the steel steps. AJ calling for the referee to stop his count as Cena recovers. Cena jumps up, grabs a distracted AJ, puts him through the announce table with an AA on the outside. AJ was holding on to a fan front row to get back to his feet, makes it in by the nine and a half. He makes it in just in time. Cena can't believe it. Cena's frustrated. Cena grabs AJ for another AA. Styles counters, rolls Cena up into the calf crusher. Cena rolls over, lifts AJ for another AA. And that is the AA that puts AJ Styles away for the pin and secures John Cena a spot in the WWE Championship match at Fastlane. After the match, uh, Cena's music hits. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn come out. Cena gets ready to fight. Here comes Baron Corbin to the uh, to uh, just get into the mix. Corbin unloads on Cena, beats him up. Sammy and Owens enter the ring. They beat down Cena and AJ. Dolph Ziggler comes out. Ziggler super kicks Corbin, drops Owens. Sammy uh, with a super kick, so Ziggler clears house. Ziggler in the middle of the ring by himself, and Ziggler turns around and drops AJ, sends him into the apron. Ziggler then receives an AA. From John Cena, and SmackDown goes off the air. So John Cena stands tall, getting to fast lane, WWE Championship match. I wish WWE would have went about it in a different way, but whatever the case may be, Cena was on SmackDown. They wanted the ratings boost. Cena's added to fast lane. It's going to increase pay-per-view buys or network subscriptions or viewership for fast lane because Cena's in there now. Whatever, man. Whatever. SmackDown is still dull. I wish they would have went about it in a different, more creative and intriguing way. Cena did not need it to be uh, added to the WWE Championship match. There's enough people in that match already. I just hope that these multi-man matches really start dwindling down as the year goes on. And it's probably going to get worse because they're going to find every which way to fit everybody on the WrestleMania card, making the fucking pay-per-view eight hours long this year. Not everybody needs to be on WrestleMania's card. You know, you put people where they belong because they belong there. Not because you are are trying to force people onto the show just to get everybody on the show. It doesn't work that way. Quality over quantity, please. SmackDown was good because of the AJ Styles-John Cena match. Everything else was fucking garbage. Usos were great as always. Again, everything else was garbage. It's the same old fucking shit every single week. You give me a 30-minute match with John Cena and AJ Styles, fine. There's no way anybody's going to say anything bad about the show when you got a fucking big-time match like that. Everything else on the show is unimportant. Everything else on this show feels unimportant. So why am I going to care about it? SmackDown needs a huge boost of momentum, man. I can only hope that after Fastlane, we start really getting into the fucking swing of things for WrestleMania. I just don't have any faith in this, in this brand right now. It is a dead, dead, boring, dull, stale Tuesday night show for WWE. I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you guys so much. Monday Night Raw Review is live on the channel right now. Make sure you guys go and check that out. Uh, Off the Script is live from last weekend. Go check that out. Elimination Chamber review. Now over 105,000 views to all the haters who say, I don't know why do people watch JD, man. He's a fucking faggot. Yeah, there you go. There you go. People watch me for the simple reason of we don't sugarcoat anything here, man. You want real? You come here. That's why people watch me. Anyway, all that shit is live on the channel right now. If you guys want more entertainment for your Tuesday night, go check it out. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to watch The Walking Dead because I have yet to do so. Apparently, uh, 
something big with Carl. I have to find out. He'll probably end up dying, I know. Uh, I don't really care for the Carl character. I didn't really care for Carl. You know, if it's, uh, if it's Rick or Negan, if Negan dies, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking get teary eyed because Negan's the man. Negan is the man, bro. You know? So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna go watch The Walking Dead. I'll see you guys tomorrow for NXT. Apparently the Blackheart, Tommaso Ciampa, is relishing the fact that this will be week one without Johnny Gargano. Hashtag copyright killer. I'll see you guys tomorrow for NXT.